Hey there, I know you don't want to see me yet, so before we get to the intro, I want to thank you all for your overwhelming support, especially these last few months. Some of you have been asking uh, about your mugs. Okay, I want you to know the vendor expects all mug club orders that have been placed before August 26th to go out this week. Uh, all of the remaining orders, they should be going out by October 9th. So hold me to that. I really hope we meet it. We just had a ton of orders, and since these are hand-painted, hand-etched, I know some of you have been waiting a long time. I really appreciate it. And for those of you who not, have not yet joined uh, up at Mug Club, ladderwithcutter.com slash Mug Club, we need you more than ever. I think you can see this right now, this recent uh, data that came out from YouTube. Um, we have been most affected by the recent algorithm. Look at that, more than Al Jazeera. We'll talk about it more. There's some stuff behind the scenes that I can't necessarily talk about. Final note. The Halloween Spooktacular. For those who don't yet know, it's October 31st at Texas A&M University. The tickets are going fast, but there is going to be an overflow room with uh, Pantelis. Half Asian Bill Richmond will be there. An after party. Bring your mugs, bring your costumes, and we're going to have some giveaways. Again, go to lotterwithcrowder.com slash tour. We really appreciate the support. Enjoy the show. Lotter with Crowder Studios. Protected exclusively by Walther. And Hopper. Now, throughout my years, I've come to realize there are seven words you cannot ever, ever say on YouTube. Now, no one ever tells you what these words are. You have to say them out loud for YouTube to cancel you. Because it's YouTube's ever-changing list. Same words. Two years later, a different list. And these words reach our chink, tranny, faggot, fag, fig, and Mexicans. Yes, today, those are the words. Retard, chink, tranny, faggot, fag, fig, and Mexican. And Mexican doesn't even belong on that list. It's a benign word. A descriptor, really. How else do we refer to them? Sir, he's one of those members from down south. Honduran? Ah, uh, no. Salvadorian? No. Colombian? Argentinian? Peruvian? Chilean? Brazilian? He's Mexican. Cancelled. Just like that. These words, retard, chink, tranny, faggot, fag, fig, and Mexican. Now the problem with these words is that words change. Notice, I didn't say the N word. Why? Because everyone here knows which word that is. Not one member in the audience right now is thinking nubile. No, because the N word has only ever been one word with one meaning. But not retard, chink, tranny, faggot, fag, fig, and Mexican. Every one of those cancel-worthy words in today's culture, which we can't say now, at some point meant something else. Tranny. Well, that's a scary cancel-worthy word for today's backyard mechanic. Well, your starter's fine, your alternator works, but there seems to be a leak in your T-word. Mainly the T-word gasket where its dick used to be. Chink. Now, granted, that would seem self-explanatory until you realize again that it's a word with multiple meanings. Captain, I found the C word in their armor. No, not cunt. I wouldn't find that in an armor. Unless I suppose she's a female knight, but then we'd have to add another word to the list. See, because these words, they also change depending who's using them or who is hearing them. They can't just hurt on their own, they're just words. But you can use that C word on YouTube. You can use that C word provided that it's not the previously aforementioned C word and that said person using this given C word is a woman and that they're referring to the current president's wife. You see. Words change. Chink was a common word. A benign word, it was used in cultural idioms. To make it a hate word because a jackass said something racist is to give that racist power. And it convolutes the meaning of the word. Now you have people who mistakenly believe it to be the original meaning of that word. Captain, we found a Chinese American in their armor. Do you hear that? That's the sound of a protest starting. Now, please note that the Asian Americans themselves are always notably absent from these protests. They'll let the other social justice warriors distract you while they simply take over your economy and skilled labor employment opportunities. No, they don't make protest signs. They're too busy making money. Seems they found your them in your armor. 
retard, chink, tranny, faggot, fag, fig, and Mexican. Now faggot, or fag, these are the new F words. If you say those, you're immediately canceled on YouTube. Primarily because it's moderated entirely by F words. No, no, not fuck. That's the old F word. You can say fuck all you want on YouTube, provided that it is not referring to, in a derogatory manner, the performative actions of an aforementioned F word. And here, we run into another problem. Because these words, they were co-opted, these F words too. They too, throughout history, have had different meanings to different peoples. A fag, a faggot. Well, are we talking about a bundle of sticks, a lazy old lady, or George Michael in a California rest stop? <laughs> I was performing in London. A man outside the venue asked for a cigarette. He was put before a human rights tribunal. <laughs> your Honor, my client uh, merely asked the man in question for an F word. Do you mean to say that your client was soliciting prostitution? No, Your Honor, he just wanted a cigarette. He's not an F word. <laughs> The peck dance until I realized that a black shirt is horrible for the contrast. Yeah, you can't so see, you none can't of see that. it. What was the film? Before I move on to anything else, there was a film <laughs> with twin choose. babysitters who were black haired uh, bodybuilders with the kid from Three Ninjas. House party. No, you're making. You know, this uh, is cultural twins. differences. What? I'll be okay yeah, if right. Gerald says something. I'll smack no. him. I will <laughs> shove bamboo wood chips up your thumbs. Okay, listen. <laughs> Eric Cochran <laughs> is on the show. You might be saying, hey, who's that? He is the whistleblower who uh, works man. with Project Veritas. Ooh. Came out from uh, Pinterest, and he has some more info on some of the, the new big tech issues going on, oh, which nice. <laughs> yeah, <you know>. <laughs> <laughs> we're putting on our game face. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> question of the day before I move on to who's here. Let me ask oh, you this. Man. Who do you think is the most dishonest Democrat in office at present. You know what? It can be media personalities, but let's go with politicians for today. Is it Congressman Schiff? Hint. Audio (laughs) Wade, you'll like this because he's all into fiction, you know, because he's effective and stuff. He's like, I only read fiction. I only read the books. I don't see the movies. This is called foreshadowing. It's a literary technique. We'll be talking about Congressman Schiff. Do you think it's Congressman Schiff or can you come up with someone else who lies more, uh, more blatantly, publicly, repeatedly. We have my half Asian lawyer, Bill Richmond, is here. Hey, Thank you, sir, for being here. Quarter black hair. Show me your hood pass. What's up, dog? And G. Morgan Jr., he's tapering off painkillers. What's yes. the wine of the day? It's tough coming down from that. Chateau Saint Michel artist series. Wow. Ooh. It's fantastic. Speaking of come downs, um, <laughs> I meant you. I'm not even sure what We that do means. have a lot to get to, but, uh, but first, here's a sleeveless lesbian getting a flu shot. <laughs> Well, there you go. (laughs) It actually works. You seem to go, ooh, tubular. (laughs) He skateboarded in there, too. Skateboarded in there. Like, hey, do you want a uh, glass glass of orange juice or a cookie? He's like, no, I'm just full of energy on my own. (laughs) (laughs) Did you see Yang showing him up? No, what did Yang do? Doing the same thing. Oh, I thought Yang stuck the needle in his neck. (laughs) (laughs) And then raised more cash than God. That would be better. And counted it really quickly. You know what I'm talking about. Kicking things (laughs) off. We're going to be talking about Schiff. Uh, It's a slow news week outside of Ukraine, and let's be honest, we don't have any more info than you do, so I don't care that much. Um, (laughs) Important story, Hillary Clinton said in an interview recently that Donald Trump knows he's, quote, an illegitimate president. So if she says it, uh, this comes from HuffPo. (laughs) You know it's trustworthy. She went on to add that his guilty conscience over being illegitimate was the main reason he is so obsessed with her. Hmm. Now, keep in mind, Democrats have been pushing this idea of Trump not being a legitimate president. You know, this is the first time they've been trying to completely undermine the office that I've seen in my lifetime. Uh, I know he lost the popular vote, but he won well over the 270 electoral college votes needed (laughs) to win. As far as him being obsessed with Hillary Clinton, Okay, she may have a point. 
in your face. I kicked your ass in your face. I won the state in your face. You crooked bitch in your face. You should have hit Wisconsin. <laughs> Serenader. Ah, I love it. He doesn't want to work oh in anything gosh. processed or sold or sell anything that's been bought, sold, yeah. or processed. Hmm. <laughs> that's tough. Didn't even watch say anything? No. Okay. <laughs> I'm not I so did. much a John Cusack fan, but I am a Joan Cusack aficionado. Oh. I know every oh. nook and cranny. Oh, oh that's disgusting. Oh. Oh. Stop stop speaking of ours, you stop it. No. Just because she's not traditionally beautiful. <laughs> At all. And by traditional, whatever yeah. your yeah. truth is, my friend. I mean, beautiful. Speaking <laughs> of our president, uh, a new book came well, out. She's never going to come on the show. That claims. I like her. He wanted a border wall stocked with, quote, snakes and alligators. It comes Damn from straight. Mediate. <laughs> the book quotes an anonymous source who explained that Donald Trump wanted a reinforced border wall. The wall would include barbed wire, snakes, and alligators to dissuade the Mexicans from illegally crossing the border, as well as a water-filled moat to stop the blacks. <laughs> <laughs> also uh, in the oh news, my gosh. Robert De Niro. They have trouble swimming. Oh, yeah, is that why? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's like half Asian. Bill Richmond. You guys, you guys don't need to learn how to swim. You're so so buoyant. You're like the baby on the Nirvana cover. No, we we'll just hire all. The I think it was sinking. I really, I really drive do. our boats. I know the I feeling. Also swimming. in the news. <laughs> Robert De Niro appeared on oh, CNN's uh, Reliable Sources this oh, week. No. I hate using that name. Brian Stelter's show. It. Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, for those who missed it, this is how it went down. A lot of criticism of you. F em. Okay, well, you know, this is cable, <laughs> Sorry. so it's not an FCC Whoa. violation. Sorry. Sorry. But it is still a Sunday morning. Yeah. <laughs> I love the producer. Whoa! Whoa. Was, it, was hey. the point there is that people are in church, and so Sunday morning's not yeah. when you say that? I don't know. I have no, no, I have no idea. I thought Sunday morning. I think he meant Sunday mornings were busy at the local porta potties. It's, it's listen, it's Robert oh, no. De Niro, okay? Yeah. When you have Robert De Niro on your show, you should expect Robert De yeah. Niro. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it, people don't know this. They didn't see the interview only got worse. Oh. But it is still a Sunday morning. Let's fit in a break. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, it's oh, it's a family show. Okay, not now. I know. okay. Go take a soul cycle, you fat. Let's squeeze in a commercial. Humpty Dumpty, put this fat back together. You fucking. Okay, phenomenal. well, you know, you're not fooling anyone. More Get Robert the camera on my fucking just face. A well, I don't know what to yeah. expect. I don't know. It seems yeah. like you should have expected that. I am. I should have saw it coming. Zero oh. parts surprise. I shouldn't say zero parts surprise. I'm <laughs> Nine no. parts not surprised, yeah. one part yeah. joyous. Exactly. <laughs> At least he called him out. We Switching like to Brian. science, uh, because we talk about science on this show. We love Researchers, it. they're now claiming that when they told people eating less red meat was a good idea, it may have been horrible advice. Yes! Mm. This comes yes! from the New York Times. The new report claims there's no evidence to support the belief that eating less pork and beef is healthier for Woo. you, while critics claim this research quote, erodes public trust in the scientific community. This is coming, of course, from the vegan lobbyists, people who don't like hearing this. The scientific community, by the way, is at odds over this new info with staunch advocates mm. right now arguing vigorously mm. from both sides to defend their position. Yeah. But if red meat were driving cancer and you reduce red meat and you see no effect on cancer, that is a pretty strong indication that red meat does not cause cancer. How dare you! <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm convinced. It's hard to accept. One on the, the scoreboard for Greta Thunberg. Yeah. Absolutely. Look, <laughs> I am, I'm thrilled about this, right? Because it, they think that we don't trust them already, and it's because they do stuff like this. They're right. Oh, I thought we you were saying you were thrilled that Greta clearly slam dunked that debate. <laughs> Greta was excellent. Just a 10 out of 10. Yeah. She was, no. she was on her A game. I was bypassing Greta. I'm hiring her at the law firm. It's yeah. done. The offer's extended. She <laughs> was bringing the heat, unlike Rudy at Notre Dame. 2020. Oh, come on. <laughs> Got the biggest argument pre show we've ever gotten into because of that. Nobody's ever going to know. Nobody except for the people we recorded it for. <laughs> right. yeah, exactly. If you're not a member of Go Mug Irish. Club, you'll see that up there on Mug Club. Go for some Irish. reason, Gerald supports the idea that Rudy deserved to play, even though we didn't get a second. And I have life. more Okay, points. stop it. Gerald, <laughs> just it's <laughs> enough. And I know you're tapering on. off of Norco, but come on now. It's difficult. Okay. In 2020 news, uh, presidential candidate Kamala Harris said this week that Twitter should suspend President Trump's account. She said oh, the wow. privilege of using words in that way should probably be taken from him. Ooh. Expert advice, considering <laughs> Kamala Harris has a long and storied history of taking people's rights away. Yeah. It's usually the people who can't swim. Oh, I th oh. oh. Remember the moat. <laughs> Is it the alligators? Gerald doesn't get it. <laughs> Gerald doesn't ah. get it. No, Gerald doesn't well, get it. <laughs> I miss Gerald B. Gerald B. at least was like, you know what? Gerald he, he B. Was very sat stoic. there and Gerald B. would say, you know, I don't have to get it. Maybe this one's not for me. <laughs> yeah. 
He let it slide. But I'll go on. with it. Whereas it's, Gerald, Gerald B looks Gerald like everything for him. Be like this, like no, no, <laughs> no. He's that face I would see in the audience who was laughing until I said the one thing he didn't like. He's like, mm, uh -uh. Mm, no, no. Let's go, honey. We're leaving. No, time to no, go. No, two be drink here. minimum, not for this. I didn't get two Arnold Palmers to hear you insult <laughs> my sweetheart. Switching. Oh my gosh. <laughs> To the the art I'd like scene. to silence right there. because we're a very cultured uh, program here. The art scene. Someone, but we're going to be talking about uh, Schiff in a little bit, and of course we have yeah, Eric Cochran. But this is uh, this is important. The art scene. Yes. This yeah. is what shapes culture. Someone just bought a painting of Channing Tatum's scrotum, hmm. so it's described as a very realistic portrait oh, of wow. the Hollywood Titan, and it sold for over six thousand dollars. Initial oh, reports oh implied That's, that yeah. it was actually a nude painting. It turns out it was just a picture of Tatum on the red carpet with 21 Jump Street co-star Jonah Hill. So, oh, no. yeah. That's, <laughs> oh. What are you laughing about that? I mean, that's... For that's people on audio, that, that makes no sense. The thing that's remarkable about that, can we bring that back up, Quarter Blackbeard? Oh, yeah, is that he still looks very much like Jonah yes. Hill. Yes. <laughs> As, oh. say, I still don't know what you're talking about. That's just to a distinguish. photo of Jonah Hill. It's, yeah. that's very yes. much... It's just a rough night for Not him. Not anything different than the reality. All right. Oh, my gosh. You had a point there, G. Morgan Jr. No, no, look, I'm a fan of art just like everybody else, but really, like, seriously, getting down to the person that spent $6,000 on that, like, how, how is that something that you want to have? Right. It's an idiot. I don't tax. understand. Ar art aficionados, they usually say it. I'm a, I'm a fan of art like anybody else, uh, <laughs> right? <laughs> Which means I'm not a fan of art, pretty much. What do you think much? of this Monet? <laughs> well, probably just as much as the next guy. <laughs> <laughs> Come fan on. Yeah, fan. Look at it. Who spends $6,000 for a it? shot About of any like scrotum out $18? there? $18. Uh, that brings us uh, right now, actually, to a uh, new segment, Loud with Carter's Entertainment Minute. No. Well, was a, that was needlessly long. <laughs> it was. Yes. I liked it. It's, it's Hollywood. I was half expecting Mario Lopez to show up. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't think he has a job anymore since he yeah. had the gall to suggest that giving four-year-olds puberty blockers might not be good parenting. Bad idea. Sorry, Mario. Bad we idea. have a job for him. you here. Just kidding. We don't. Um, <laughs> I don't know what you can do other than AC Slater and talk about things that don't matter. The band yeah, that's true. Metallica in entertainment news. The band Metallica has canceled uh, upcoming tour dates. Did you hear about mm -hmm. this? Yep. Yeah. 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 They uh, canceled upcoming tour dates. So frontman James Hetfield can spend some time in, in rehab. It mm. came out. He yeah. reportedly suffers from a crippling addiction to making shitty music. <laughs> You're this, you suck. You are a terrible Come person. On. Metallica's Metallica awesome. Metallica's great. Actress. Boo. Linda Perry. Come on. Boo. You hear that? Metallica's good. That's the sound of Metallica album sales plummeting. Boo. There are. G. Morgan Jr. doesn't understand that he has the power to manipulate markets. He's like a Wall He's Street speculator <laughs> in the opposite way. Boo. He says, "Hey, I like Metallica, and it Boo. tanks." I don't know what happened. It was. Boo. I don't know what happened here. We were on the Billboard 100. Yeah. And then Bill was Gerald right there. Just shows up. Bill was there too. Other he likes people Metallica. Need to talk. Gerald I don't, Morgan I don't Jr. know what you're talking about. <laughs> Actress Linda Porter, uh, actor Rob Garrison, and restaurateur Carl Ruiz, I believe his name. They all died last week, oh, tragically. So, you know, they say that celebrities die in threes. Yeah. Evidently, the same goes for people I've never heard of. <laughs> Legendary singer Jose Jose, that's, that's his name. Uh, oh. Nothing like a walking stereotype. Yeah. <laughs> Jose, Jose, he, he died at age 71, and the cause of death is listed as, quote, El Heart Attack -o. <laughs> Finally, singer Ricky Martin and husband uh, Juan Yosef are expecting their fourth child together. Oh, wow. Fourth, oh, yeah. Wonderful. Hmm. Ricky Martin says he impregnated the surrogate by closing his eyes and picturing a hot, hairy ass. Oh. That uh, oh. ends this week's oh. Entertainment Minute. <laughs> You should have seen uh, half Asian lawyer Bill Richmond. <laughs> he made Rodney Dangerfield eyes at the last minute. <laughs> it was actually just exactly like that. That's actually very good. I, I actually pulled my. Yeah, I did. I did yeah, that as well. One of those steam release. Yeah. I would love to see an Asian Rodney Dangerfield. <laughs> That'd be pretty funny. I'll gain weight. <laughs> More weight. Oh, oh, finally, oh, uh, oh, before we get to shift, no. President Trump told the press this week that the White House is, quote, trying to find out who, who the whistleblower is. A lot yeah. of people know this. Some people, of course, yep. are viewing this as a thinly veiled threat against the anonymous accuser. Um, a source in the White House has actually said that the president is heading up a new investigation himself, even going as, as far as making some phone calls. Oh. Hello, Russell Warehouse. Yes, hi. I'm calling to find out the identity uh -huh. of the filthy whistleblower. Okay, frankly, uh -huh. I've been told you could help me. Uh -huh. What kind of whistle you want? No, no, I'm trying.
like to find the whistleblower. Okay, I need to know who bought the whistle. How much you don't know about that? Okay, how much she bought it for, and if that whistle was at any time hedge blow. Uh, uh, yeah, you want to buy a whistle? Okay, frankly, listen, because you're not listening, you call yourself a salesman. I have reason to believe you sold a whistle to someone with a strong intention, frankly, to blow it. Uh -huh. Now, who was that? Uh -huh. Oh! Robert Mata? <laughs> Corruption. It's the international the language. Yeah. It know. knows no boundaries. Hey, uh, who was last week's uh, trivia contest winner there? Uh, it is. Black Garrett. Noir Vala. Noir Vala. Vala. Careful uh, out. Careful out. Answering. Uh, they are a, a furry, so. Oh, oh, geez. Ooh, wow. Well, well, that's perverse. <laughs> uh, answering that I painted Muhammad uh, using uh, yeah. uh, menstruation is Bob Ross. So we're going to send oh, him a wonderful yeah. gift card. Nice. All right. Is everyone ready to move on to, to Adam Schiff? Yes. Let's do it. We'll talk so. a little bit about the Ukraine. I, you know, we had a segment yesterday on the Ukraine. Yeah deal it was yep. all formatted and i appreciate you giving me some time to just sort of rant about why i think donald trump is the right man for this job at this point in time and frankly we don't have a whole lot more info than other people do but uh, i think at the blaze tv they're actually doing a whole live show tonight yeah. glenn beck right after this for those who are watching on the blaze those watching on youtube you'll have to sign up uh, covering from pillar to post the ukraine scandal so let's focus on adam schiff uh he's in the news for his involvement with the scandal mm -hmm. now here's the thing it turns out for people who don't know that the schiff knew about the whistleblower complaint before before it was filed, and his team wow. actually advised the whistleblower on how to proceed. And uh, President Trump, this is why he's just the best <laughs> president ever. <laughs> I mean, and I don't mean he's kind of better. Like if you put him, like, well, okay, yeah, where do right. you rank him above, like McKinley this is why he gets or my people vote. who don't matter? No, no, George Washington is a distant second. <laughs> wow, oh. that's Behind a he's the president we need. <laughs> he was asked about it, and responded like this at a press conference yesterday. <laughs> There is a report that came out just before you and President Ninishto walked out here that the whistleblower met with the staff. <laughs> <and Adam Schiff. laughs> oh, I love that question. <laughs> it shows that oh, Schiff man. is a fraud. And I, you I love that this? question. Thank you, John. He's <laughs> <laughs> so bitchy. Yes. Thank you, Jed. Oh, thank you. I love you, John. You're my favorite. Oh, you mean this one? You mean this one right and here? when I say favorite, I mean not. <laughs> okay? <laughs> It was a solid response. I love. He was just ready. He was Super. ready with the yeah. ready with the paper. He was holding oh, up yeah. the paper. I love that. For people who are listening to the audio version, as soon as the question is asked, he's just like, "Got it." Yeah. And holds up his paper like he has the cheat yeah. sheet, oh, like the awesome. guy in White Squall who gets kicked off the boat before yes. it goes down. Be the husband this. can't reach his wife. It's a very sad film. Good film. Good film. <laughs> so here's the thing: Trump, President Trump, uh -huh. is right. Not only did Schiff secretly communicate with the whistleblower, he lied about it. Which brings us to this week's what a piece of Schiff. Took hours it. Yeah. <laughs> to it. change it over to shift. It was crazy. A whole, it's a whole paradigm shift. I think we have a clip. Yeah, oh, and we, it's not a super long clip, but I think it provides context. Uh, not only did he communicate, he, he lied about the whistleblower and communicating with him. We have not spoken directly with the whistleblower. Uh, we would like to. Oh. There you have it. Straight oh, really? from the dick's mouth. Oh. Really? Mm. Really? Mm. That's interesting. I guess it's more of a glands penis at that point, <laughs> if you're talking about a mouse. Uh, more of a Clydesdale. <laughs> has a mane. So Schiff, Horse by the size. way, here's something important to note. This is, the more you unpeel the layers to this onion, the more enraged you will you, you will find yourself. Yeah. He was mirroring, actually, the whistleblower's talking points on Twitter over a month ago to give a false sense of corroboration, right? Wow. Because people see it and go, well, hold on a second. Well, this, yeah. sounds like what, this sounds like what that yeah. Schiff character said. K keep in mind, well, the, the whistleblower doesn't have any firsthand knowledge of the event, no. right? There's, it's just, oh, someone said that Donald yeah. Trump yeah. did something. Somebody said something. Then he went to Schiff, and Schiff turned around and corroborated it preemptively. <laughs> what is he corroborating? The complaint. They didn't have any, there was no firsthand knowledge of it in the first place. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> someone said something. It. I'm going to go on Twitter, and, and I'm going to lay the foundation right. that, so, yeah. that this happened, that someone said something, and yeah. then you'll come out, and then I'll tell them that I didn't talk with you yeah. about it. 
Of also, I, I mean, I'm, I might kill myself. Right. Hey, Bill. There's uh, a by strong maybe. chance. By, by the way, is firsthand information important in uh, legal no, circles? No no, 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 no. I mean, only if you want to be morally and justifiably right. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh. Okay, thank, okay. I'm just making just, sure. Just I'm not a lawyer. I don't depends know. Depends what mark you're trying to hit there, like being honest <laughs> or a shitbag. I got you. Yeah, I feel like the standards yeah. that the left are using legally is is Vinny and my cousin Vinny before he improved, before the redemption. Yes. But your honor, my clients yes. didn't do anything. They thought they were getting a can of tuna fish. Only that's what they're doing, and they think they're going to win this. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, exactly. this, it's very clear that they, that his idea of how we're going to go, but, but, you know, imagine he would have gotten away with it, right? I mean, yeah. if he would have done yeah. a little bit better, he could have gotten away with looking prescient, having found this information, and instead, he's caught red-handed. Yeah. I can do it too. It. Shift shut the clerk. Shift shut the clerk. So, uh, here's another example. Schiff, he claimed that Trump uh, tried to get dirt from the Ukraine, right, yeah. on his political opponents. That's kind of the, the, the crux of this. Yeah. Right. Well, here's something else. If we're talking, and I don't want to do the whataboutism because I don't think this is a whataboutism. I don't think there's a direct comparison. I think that what Schiff has done is far, far worse. Let me explain. And I have videographic evidence. Take that, young Turks. Just Google it. How about <laughs> you do it? <laughs> Be like, I don't understand that. The young Turks, Samantha, these people, they don't even provide sources. Yeah. Go, yeah. Google it. Well, isn't that your, I don't know, job? Yeah. yeah. No. It's like if you go into a restaurant, I have the chicken cordon bleu. You cook it. <laughs> Sounds reasonable. Why are you here? <laughs> Al Jazeera money. So nice. Schiff himself <laughs> tried to get tried to pro procure, I'm trying to use more oh. official terms Ooh, here. there you go. Mm. Uh, nude pictures of President Trump from the Ukrainians. But here's the thing. The Ukrainians turned out to be Russian pranksters. Oh. They were comedians, and they, they pulled the wool over his eyes. Okay. And, and what's the nature of the compromise? Well, there were pictures of naked Trump. Uh, when they were in Ukraine, we got their conversation by the phone where they discussed those uh, compromising materials. We are ready to provide it to FBI. So we will try to work with the FBI to figure out, uh, along with your staff, how we can obtain copies of those. Of course, we will provide you all our copies of all our materials. Okay, first off, uh, I guess we'll just ignore uh, the raging homoerotic undertones. Right, yeah. You know, they tried weird. to come after Ben Shapiro because he said no one, no one has described Brett Kavanaugh's penis, which is kind of a trend now with rapists. Yeah. It happened with Michael Jackson, happened yeah, with yeah, Bill Cosby. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right there, did you hear Schiff? He's like, oh, well, can you send me, uh, can you send me the photo negatives? <laughs> I got a, I got a private I like the photo just negatives because like it a, reminds uh, me of when I would try and scramble the satellite signal when I was a kid and I couldn't actually afford it. My <laughs> parents were in the next room. It is amazing to me. He was trying to find oh nude gosh. pictures. And by the way, nude pictures, that's not even a scandal. That's no, not yeah. illegal. It's, like, it's just okay. embarrassing. Especially with this president. Do you think he would actually care? He's like, that's the best body. Come on, look at that. Oh, look I, think at that great. I think President Trump He care. wouldn't it's care. The biggest Come I, on. I don't know. He would turn uh, it on. By the way, hit the notification bell. Uh, join Mug Club if you haven't already. $99 annually, 69 for student veteran acts of active military. And uh, just check the page. We do a new yeah. segment yeah. every single day because, as you've seen, uh, <laughs> do it. <laughs> Facial Air Village, you know. <laughs> yes, no, stop it's talking about it. It's hard out Thank here you. for a content creator. <laughs> would be easier if I were a pimp. Their it channels, yes, they're yes. on the recommended feed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. How to backhand a bitch. Trending. Come. So that, that would, that would work right. better. At the Trending. top. But yeah. then if we talk about Schiff, I don't know why we get throttled. Yeah, we do. Maybe it should just be backhanding Schiff. <laughs> Here's another example here why I think he's absolutely just a stunning. I mean, it's a skill as to how piece of shitty he is. Uh, remember when the, the, the texts of um, the FBI agents, remember, was it Page and, and Stroke? Mm -hmm. They were released? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we had direct evidence of FBI agents saying that they wouldn't let Trump get elected because they had, quote, insurance policies in case he did. All right. That's Schiff not scary. <laughs> responded that the FBI heavily favored Trump over Clinton. Here you go. They were very selective in what they released. There were multiple reports last year that the FBI was heavily predisposed against Hillary Clinton uh, and in favor of Donald Trump. You know, and here's, huh? the, here's the thing. He's not necessarily wrong depending on who's mm -hmm. working there at the FBI. Right. I think we all assume there can be bias because people, human beings yeah. have bias. Yeah. Right. right? Right. Sure. But when Trump does that, when he says, oh, Kobe's a hacker, Mueller, listen, this is a witch hunt, they try to accuse him of obstruction yeah. <laughs> for doing exactly what Schiff is doing there. Yeah, exactly. Well, and he has he has big trust issues with the establishment around him, and you wonder why. With, when stuff like that comes out and FBI agents say things like that, that's not just a casual text, right? right. That's not just casual conversation. Of course he's not going to trust. And those are the people in charge of investigating him. Are you kidding me? You right. wouldn't trust people like that. So, of course, you would go out and say these things and try to defend yourself in the press. I wouldn't trust Schiff with a pair of safety scissors. <laughs> no.
He'd find a way. So Sh- Shift, by the way, he's also another example. He'd find a way. He's not, you would come back and go, what, this, this is remarkable. Did, I'm not even mad. Little wow. Shift. Amazing. How did you destroy everything? <laughs> it's what I do. <laughs> I'm a piece of shit. <laughs> um, here's another example. Uh, Schiff, he's, he's known. This is something people don't know. He's known. It's kind of his his raison d'être uh, for leaking repeatedly private info to the press and then lying about it. CNN is running quotes from noon on about my testimony. It, you know, testimony. <laughs> Does mean, he have a cold? My testimony. What's going on in there? <laughs> Sorry, Since he's never met a camera he didn't love. I, I would bet a lot of money that it was him. All right, you heard, uh, you, you got the point. Uh, you want to respond? Uh, yeah, sure, he, you know, he's been making this claim all along. Just to be precise, yes or no, did you leak any of the information from his testimony? No, uh, I don't leak. Uh, well, <laughs> beg to first differ. Off, how do you get caught flat-footed by Wolf lowest score ever on Celebrity <laughs> Jeopardy Blitzer? <laughs> And I will say this, with this specific clip, maybe we cannot prove that he's lying, but he's still a piece of shit. Yeah, pretty, that's the key takeaway. Yeah, I think it's pretty. His, yeah. And he's going to say, "Trust me." And here's something Don't else I would it. love to. I defer to uh, half Asian lawyer Bill Richmond. This yeah. during the Mueller investigation, Schiff he repeatedly claimed that um, he had seen beyond circumstantial evidence that Trump had colluded with Russia, even after Mueller ruled that there, there, there was no evidence of collusion. People say hey, the report didn't say no collusion. Well, hold on a second. It just says there's no evidence of it. You can say that about anything. Someone who gets off for any crime, like, well, the fact that he wasn't convicted of shoplifting does doesn't mean that he didn't do it, but there's no evidence. So he's not guilty of it. That's how society works, correct? Absolutely. We have a legal system, and if there is no evidence and you are not convicted, it means you didn't commit the crime in the eyes of the law, right? That's exactly. That's what that's exactly why we have the system is to be able to call balls and strikes, make it done, make it done, and then move along. And here what I find hilarious is the example that he has beyond circumstantial evidence. It's like it's like the beyond meat impossible burger, right? It's like, no, it's not actually <laughs> meat, exist. and this is not actually evidence. Right. You actually have to have something, and when he's asked repeatedly and repeatedly, repeatedly, he dances around. Well, we didn't actually talk to him and well, we didn't actually get direct evidence, but like we put, if you put together the different inferences and lies, then it's a story. Yes. If you put, <laughs> here's what's important. If you put together different inferences, accusations, and of course, keeping in the front of your mind at all times that I am a piece of shit, I think you will come to see this issue in a new light. Here's actually a clip of him doing just that. All you have right now is a circumstantial case. Uh, actually, no, Chuck. Uh, I, I can tell you that the case is more than that, uh, no, and I can't so? go into the particulars. Oh, but there is more can't. than circumstantial evidence now. So, um, again, I think so you Director have Clapper, seen direct evidence of collusion. Uh, I don't want to go into specifics, but I would say that there is evidence that is not circumstantial. As I've said along, there's plenty of evidence of collusion and corrupt uh, commingling of uh, work between the Trump campaign and the Russians. Oh. Good Lord. Oh. I mean, just That's, for, by the way, unless you think we're editing him out of context, he never did provide specifics. And everything, <laughs> yeah, in no, that yeah. interview, and you're waiting for it, don't hold your breath. Yeah. Yeah. Google don't it. You Google it. What, is this, yeah. what does it mean when he's saying more than circumstantial? Explain for people who mm. don't know what circumstantial mm-hmm. evidence means. We throw that around a lot. Yeah, so indirect evidence. I mean, circumstantial evidence can be things that create an inference of what the actual thing may be. Yeah. So, for example, if you have, you know, you want to say someone committed fraud, you to be able to prove fraud, you have to prove that they intended to deceive you. And a lot of the times, you can't read someone's mind. And unless they yeah. say, I intended to defraud you, you, that would be direct evidence. You have mm-hmm. to have circumstantial evidence like they knew the truth, but they told you a false statement anyways. Here, when you say you have circumstantial evidence, you should be able to describe that circumstantial evidence. If you have beyond circumstantial evidence, <laughs> you definitely can explain what it is. But yet, when he was asked, do you have direct evidence, which is the only thing beyond circumstantial evidence? <laughs> is says, there, There's no in-between? There's no like circumstantial, middle-stantial, piece of shit? Shift stanchial. <laughs> I mean, that's, no. yeah, 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 there is shift stanchial, but that's like somehow hitting two keys on a piano at the same time and getting a note in between. That's nobody's note. I mean, it's <laughs> not there. It's not the thing. It's not. It's nothing. Yeah. Like I if you've got you went to the, the piano and yeah, he had to, right? Nothing like perpetuating the original stereotype. <laughs> well, well, look, I, I think um, I think we're going to look back on this as one of the worst political like hatchet jobs in the United States. He's Chinese. I, I get that part. <laughs> But I, I really am. do. I, I think we will. I think we'll look back on this and go, oh, my gosh, when people came out and said that I don't think Donald Trump is going to accept the election results. Right. The Democrats said that. And then it goes against yeah. them. And now they're thinking, oh, no, it's Russia collusion. We've got to throw everything at him. I'm, I'm serious. Like this is this is bad for the country. It doesn't matter what side you are on, because now we have 
the next person doing the exact same thing. So what happens when the next person gets in the office that's a liberal or a Democrat? Do you think some Republicans wouldn't do that? Somebody wouldn't right. say, well, you They're did it to Donald Trump. Too. The pendulum just keeps swinging further and further. So you have to calm this crap I don't, down. I mean, I don't see any Republicans on the horizon. I don't horizon. really like, either. But Lindsey Graham, I mean, he's kind of he's kind of slimy. He's a little bit greasy. He's not shitty. <laughs> he's I, not agree. Shifty, I agree. No. I don't think the Republicans would step to that quickly. But if you open the door to it, you can take a president out by doing that. I've grown, I've grown tired of your commentary because... <laughs> I've been wanting to get to this. I've been tired of all of it because this clip I've been waiting for. A lot of people haven't seen this. It only trended for yeah. two hours yeah. on Twitter. And it was gone. And then it was gone. I'm going, Hold on a second. Yeah. This is, in my opinion, as bad as it gets. It's as bad as anything I've ever seen in the political arena. When people talk about the right and the left are dividing us, I go, no, 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 hold on a second. Let's not do the equivalency here because have you seen shitty Schiff? He made up <laughs> an entire dialogue of Trump's phone call with the Ukrainian president. I want you to see him doing this here, presenting this as though it was fact. He expresses his interest in meeting with the president and says his country wants to acquire more weapons from us to defend itself. And what is the president's response? Well, it reads like a classic organized crime shakedown. I hear what you want. I have a favor I want from you. None of this happened. And I'm going to say this only seven times, so you better listen good. I want you to make up dirt on my political opponent. Understand lots of it. Now, I know some of you are asking, because I get it. It's, it's, it's difficult today in our polarized society to know, okay, who's exaggerating? Right. Where are you stretching? Because everyone does, especially for comedy, we do that. Yeah. So you're wondering how much, what percentage of that, if we were to put a number on it, uh, is, is accurate? Um, Zero. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> None at all. None of that ever happened. And here's something that's so dishonest, too. When you watch it, he, he, he's reading it, and at one point he looks up and looks back down and goes, uh, though, as though he missed a word <laughs> that he's know, reading from right. an official transcript. Yeah. He, may, he tried to clearly I- imply that this was an official transcript. Yeah. And then when he was called on it, this was his response, that it was parody. My summary of the president's call was meant to be at least part in parody. <laughs> what a piece what? of shit. Wow. What a piece of shit. Think like, about guys, that. Are you a comedian? Second. You know, when, you, when, when Donald Trump talked about uh, people got all upset because he would talk about changing libel laws, right? And this was yeah. really just to try and get media to stand out. We weren't happy about it. How is that not slander? Right, yeah. Right. Think about that for a second. He read it as though it's a transcript. And he tried to yeah. get all high and mighty saying, oh, if people didn't understand its parody, that's a whole new problem. <laughs> Implying, like, because Donald Trump says such crazy stuff that you thought it was real when I made up stuff that Donald Trump said that was crazy that never really happened. But I told you he said crazy stuff. And so you tend to believe that this crazy stuff is crazy stuff he would say. But I'm just a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> You got to give him credit, though, for how well he sells the reading act, right? You know, like oh you were saying, like, the looking down, the pauses, the keeping it going. I mean, for if for anyone, I mean, the first time I saw that clip, I thought to myself, I, I'm going to Google it and look. <laughs> yeah. And you go look it up and you're like, well, I, I don't actually see any any of these yeah. words. Wait, not, he's right? totally not lying. Lying. No, no, no. Well, wait, I did see two of them. There was two thus in there that he actually yes, got right. Yes, yeah, there were thus. Yeah. There was also a similar number of vowels. I'm just lying. He's a piece of shit. It wasn't even close. <laughs> Nothing. Not close. He didn't even stumble across truth accidentally it is remarkable <laughs> to me that this was allowed to go it is this is i think that is worthy of being forcibly removed from office i, I really do to me that's just a person i don't mean violently no i mean this guy should be forced to resign in absolute shame i can't think of anything that would personify fake news more than reading from a fake transcript and by the way the reason he's doing that is because he knows that most people who are not hyperly engaged unlike the people in this room or often people who are watching this show or reading in the comment section he knows they're going to walk by the tv screen see this and go oh my god i can't believe our president did that right, i can't right. believe he said that yeah. and they're not going to see yeah. The aside where he says, oh, it was clearly parody, just like you don't see the slander, you don't see the libel, uh, you do see it, sorry, that occurs on the front page, and then the apology, the retraction, is issued two weeks later on page yeah. eight. Yeah. He knew exactly what he was doing. And by the way, just to go into the Ukraine thing a little bit, Democrats, they've repeatedly reached out to foreign countries, including the Ukraine for Donald yeah. Trump, okay? So at worst, at the absolute worst, Schiff is just accusing Trump of what he has done himself. <laughs> Only Donald Trump hasn't done it. His right. accusations are false. The favor that Trump asked for was investigating foreign meddling in a U.S. election, specifically in regards to a company called CrowdStrike. Not Biden, as Schiff was trying. I don't want to say Schiff suggests. Right. I mean, Schiff didn't suggest it's not that suggesting. It's, it's direct statement. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's. And I, 
But it's not even a direct statement because it wasn't a real statement. Uh, no, no, no. no. It's what, entirely no, no. a fabrication. Schiff, what Schiff's saying is actually true. Right. It wasn't that Schiff suggested that these things were happening. He made express statements yeah. intended to deceive yeah. the public about what was said. That is fraud. Right. right there. That's what it is. It's not, yeah, it's not, tr- what ha- what he said happened isn't true, but it is true that Schiff, it's, it's like the inception of sh- Yes, exactly. Yes. And by the way, I thought we cared a whole hell of a lot about fair elections, Russian meddling in our elections. We have to get to the bottom of that. That was the entire thing we heard from day one of his campaign. Now he asks about it happening in Ukraine. Right. And we're like, oh, you can't ask a foreign well, government and, and, that. Right. And to be fair, later on in the call, uh, 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 it was mentioned that, you know, Biden uh, shut down uh, this this prosecutor, the investigation of the yes. company that his son yep. worked for. It was it was a minor point. Um, here's what is pretty important to me to Schiff in the whistleblower, who, by the way, got no firsthand knowledge. Would that be considered circumstantial? Not having firsthand knowledge. Yeah. I mean, it depends, but mostly that's considered circumstantial because if you don't, I mean, there's rules, hearsay. There's a reason why you don't take yeah. out-of-court statements and use them for the truth because yeah. you can't actually test the boundaries of what's true or not true. You can't testify, if it's, right? I heard XYZ say this fact and we're going to take that fact as true, right. how are you going to test it? Right. right. Now, an eyewitness testimony isn't considered verifiable proof. So someone saying, I heard someone say yeah, that Donald right. Trump did this would seem to me, I don't know, I'm a simpleton, even less reliable. Well, I mean, we, at some point you have to accept the accept evidence, right? So right. if you were to say, okay, hey, uh, look at this piece of paper. Is the piece of paper fake? Well, you have to go through certain standards to be able to get even written evidence in. So written evidence is only as verifiable as any other piece of evidence. But the further you get away from uh, something being able to be verifiably true and it's a spectrum, the more likely it is that you would never even be able to use it in court. And right. saying, I heard someone else say uh, some other fact that they observed, but no one else saw, we have no other no. corroboration, is a line too far for every Western civilization right. system. Yes, and, thank God. And here's something that I think is important, right? There, there's a lot that we don't know. And that's why we try not to just offer nothing more than than, uh, than conjecture, because maybe some more info could come out. You know, and people who stand firmly on their opinions when there's not enough info, right. sometimes they don't really age very well. But I do think it's important to look at what we do know and compare it with what they've said that is verifiably false. Right. For yeah. example, yeah. Very we know for sure that that was not a transcript, and then he said it was parody. We know for sure that Schiff said Donald Trump was withholding military aid unless uh, they inv- unless they investigated the, or sorry fired the prosecutor. That's yeah. what they said. But here's if you understand it, Trump never threatened that at all. It wasn't even mentioned. The Ukraine officials did not know about the change in military foreign aid until a month after the call. <laughs> Yeah. So Oops. again, what you, you can't know <laughs> everything, like but you can know what they've said that is false, and you can know certain facets of the story that are true. The things that we know to be true, they've already proactively lied about. Right. That's important for people to think of. That's important for people to point out. And I don't want to get into the minutia of it because, uh, like I said, Glenn Beck has yeah. a, a special to Blaze TV, a whole thing about the Ukraine live after this. Um, is there anything else you guys want to say about it? You know, the thing is to me, they know exactly what they're doing. I don't want to ascribe ulterior motives. We've always tried to do that on the show. Yeah. Or if we do change my mind, or when we actually have debates like we've had in the show with with politicians, yeah. with professors, you know, with, with people who are, who are worthy adversaries, I always try to assume that they are being sincere. But... This is a ra- this is an yeah. exception. It's a, I don't even want to say it's a radical exception. He went up there and lied and read yeah. from a transcript that didn't exist. And when he yeah. and when he was called on it, said, well, you know what? That was meant to be parody. What, what did you think it was? Well, you know what? I yeah. think most people thought it was what you intended it to be, which was a lie that you wanted to be accepted wholesale as truth. I don't. I didn't say this with Hillary Clinton. People are like, in fact, you, she needs to be put in jail. I never jumped on that train. I don't like Nancy Pelosi. It's crazy to me that she's the reasonable one in the party. Yeah, now yeah, think about that crazy. for a second. Nancy, Nancy Pelosi. Yeah. We have when you have AOC, Schiff, Bernie Sanders, Pelosi. You're like, well, right. uh, you know what? I guess I went over for Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> <laughs> My comparison is a I mean, bridge too fine. far. She, is she the turkey? Oh Jeez, that's terrible. Well, look, you know, put yourself in a. Courtroom. I'm offended, sir. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, but it it's is the one it, from Christmas it, Vacation. How just, dare you? Know, it is interesting to think of what would be the rules if imagine a Republican had made up a transcript. Yeah. Right? yeah. yeah. Imagine if a conservative had gone up there and said, "Oh, well, actually, I'm just going to go ahead and fake this evidence because right. apparently this isn't the House of Representatives; it's the." 
fucking laugh factory. I mean, <laughs> that's what we're up here. We're doing we're doing parodies now. That's 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 the thing we do in these hearings. Yeah. I mean, oh my God. I get it. I mean, there's 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 room for funny questions and jokes. There's no room for faking evidence. And at the very no. least, the House needs to consider, or the Senate, or or you know whoever has the ability to do that, whether within the party or outside the party, to censure that kind of behavior. Just right. say to, yes. you don't agree with faking evidence. And yeah. if you want to come yeah. out and say something to do something right to restore trust in our system, it's police your own. And this is an example where the Democrats need to put their money where their mouth is. I think that's a good point. Yeah, so well, I, they want to put our money where their mouth well, is. That's yeah, true. It's, it's not their money there. necessarily. Yeah. But put yourself on a jury hearing some of this stuff and Schiff gets up on the stand and they play that and they're attacking. Like, he has no credibility left. Yeah. They play stuff like that. They play the things that we've played, the clips where he's obviously been lying, the things where he's trying to get new Most pictures. people don't know. Like, no, I that's know, the but problem. Put, that, put that up there. And then put the evidence that you have. It is, it is a blowout. There right. is no court in yeah. America that would believe him and not believe the evidence. Well, and yet, in public opinion... He's still out there saying well, this let's stuff. Picture, if Donald Trump went up, right? Like what we're talking about what would happen if Republican did it? Okay, let's do this little walk it through this exercise here. And here I have Peter Schiff mirroring what the whistleblower was going to say <laughs> about from them on Twitter, even though there was no firsthand knowledge. And Schiff knew there was no firsthand knowledge. He said he was going to go out and lie and fabricate a transcript for the world to see. They would say, can you believe this president is lying and he needs to be removed from office? Only he'd be telling the truth. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. That's, With video evidence. That is how insane this has become. It's not yeah. what aboutism. It is far worse ism as it relates to piece of Schiff, Adam Schiff. <laughs> and uh, actually, we have to get going to Eric Cochran, Ooh, uh, oh. whistleblower from Big Tech, but we're actually getting word. Uh, apparently, the altercation continues at C CNN. Oh. You tell me it's a fucking family show, huh? You in, you invited me. You invited me. I'm motherfucking for Who the fuck do you think you're fooling, huh? 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 Open your mind. Let us begin our quest to find the new sound. Mug. I get so lost, club times in your face, I beat your ass in your face, another bitch in the dirt in your face, I stomped you down in your face, you stupid Join Mug Club, where all our musical parodies will be as bad as President Trump's. This is a direct threat. What's your home defense plan? When it comes to safety, there's no substitute for a quality firearm. And if you're a gun owner, there's no replacement for firearms legal protection. Firearms Legal Protection provides lawful gun owners an uncapped legal defense program, 24-7 emergency hotline, access to a network of over 2,500 experienced attorneys, legal education on firearm laws in your state via our mobile app, and plans to protect you every step of the way if you are involved in a self-defense incident. Visit firearmslegal.com slash LWC today. Hi, all the peoples of States Unite. I'm here today at the, the climate change. Keep the carbon in the soil. Hey, hey, yep, that's it, now go. You are knocking at the gates of hell, my friend. I am an 18-year-old transsexual male, female to male. Well, I appreciate you clarifying yeah. that because I would have been horribly confused. <laughs> so a boy is at his house, he's taking a nap and he's awakened by some sounds from the room next door. When I see people where, you know, it's 4th of July, that, and I'm you just see saying, American flag, American flag, American flag, American flag, and then without fail, if there was right. a rainbow flag, there was no American flag. Right. Well, it's yeah. like, hold on a second. You can, you you can, can love your country and suck <laughs> Like, you can be into both. None of my latest videos come up in a YouTube search for my name. They're that terrified. Looking for Paul it, Joseph goodness. Watson. Did you mean to say, Senor Wences? Surat, I'm fascist. Me fascist. Yo soy yeah. fascist. Is he saying Zul? Yeah, like like the like the god. 
Is that what he's? Yeah. I am like the gatekeeper. Are you the key master? Or is yeah, I am the key master? Are you the gatekeeper? I don't know. But you know, Rick Moran is completely know. retired from the industry. I was he talking did. with Audio Wade I about him. this. I don't know. Did his wife pass? Was that? I what think it he was? took time to take care of his kids. To take care of his that's kids. Well, that's far less sinister. Yeah, he's a great dude. I should have led with that. <laughs> uh, all right, our next guest. Uh, very glad to have him on the show. Yeah. Now, some of you may be saying, "Oh, I, I, I know the name." But if I'm not mistaken, when he first was revealed publicly, mm-hmm. it was in that sort of Dateline blurred face oh, and voice. Yeah. <laughs> you know, usually it's a rapist, but he's not. You can uh, <laughs> not send your D- – Delaney, set some context here. He was uh, – he's a former software engineer, and he was a whistleblower who came yeah. forward with big tech, which is very relevant to what we're doing. By the way, people who are out there who have some tips, very tough tips at protonmail.com is what uh, this yeah. gentleman wanted us to, uh, to feed you because uh, they're always looking for new info. Mr. Eric Cochran, how are you, sir? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. I am glad to have you. And I was just saying, you have those giant headphones that you look like the uh, the, the 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 VR kid from Burger King Kids Club. Do you remember Burger King Kids <laughs> yeah, Club? Yeah, man. Do you remember Burger them, King Eric? Kids Burger awesome. King Kids Club? I don't remember this commercial. Oh, it was a series of commercials. At the Burger King Kids Club. It's cool to be a kid, and there's like a black yeah. guy with the yep. house party hair. Yeah, he's got the high top. The generically lesbian girl. Yeah. There's the I ginger. Think he had a wheelchair. Was the wheel? wheel- wheelchair yes, kid. the wheelchair. Yeah. And then the white kid, because they couldn't just say, "Here's a token white kid." He was the tech kid. Remember, like, he had the yeah. Walkman. <laughs> Jeffrey. Yeah. What so, a club. And Eric, you are very white, so it, it yes. suits yes. you perfectly. Um, so, listen for people who may not be necessarily super familiar with you, because you weren't really like a personality who spoke on politics or culture. You came into this specifically because of some information that you had in the big tech industry. I don't mean to big tech. I think we've trademarked that. So explain to people kind of your, your history and how you came to Project Veritas. Yeah, so just a few months ago, I was just a software engineer at Pinterest and uh, just kind of, you know, working on Android apps, actually, and not not too involved in politics. And then um, I, I was seeing more and more censorship. We were talking about misinformation and hate speech. And uh, and then it got to be much more sinister. I would see uh, they actually banned live action secretly on the back end. Uh, the pro-life group, Zero Hedge, uh, PJ Media, they were banning things about uh, Ben Shapiro, Bible verses. And this was all done in secret. So uh, I actually took this to Project Veritas, James O'Keefe's organization. And um, and I said, the public has to know this. Like, this is, this is the proof that we're kind of seeing from the outside from these big tech companies. And now here's actually the how and the why it's happening. And um, now, why and then, Pinterest? Yeah, though that. I don't understand why Pinterest. I mean, I, I get like you know Google, YouTube at least, and certainly Google at large, yeah. Facebook. It's sort of the information mainframe for politics. But Pinterest, I just sort of think of it as those moms who drink too much, or like <laughs> I'm having a one glass of wine for dinner. You know, it's like a punch bowl. <laughs> you know, like the, like the old Pogs, the classic Pogs. That's always why I pictured uh, Pinterest. Why would they yeah. have a political? Yeah, idea? I think you know that is that's a really good point about like moms in the middle of the country. So it, it's interesting. That that you know, they're, they want to affect that market so much. And then what it really speaks to, the biggest point is that all the tech ends up like this. You know, I actually went to Pinterest because I thought it wasn't Facebook, it wasn't right. Google. And uh, and yet, once it got to be a big enough company, they're all, they're all on the same page. There's this whole hive mind of big tech where these tech companies, they're all in Silicon Valley, they all have this same mindset, they all want to, you know, affect the 2020 election. They want, they, they, they're so much in an echo chamber, they, all are on the same page about wanting to ban Republicans. Well, now you said they want to affect the 2020 election. I get it. For example, there's a big difference. We need to delineate here. If they feel as though all conservative speech is hate speech, you know, using someone's biological, biologically proper pronouns. If they feel that that's hate speech, I understand how that could sort of dictate their policies or behavior. Do you think that's the case or you think they're specifically setting out to affect the 2020 election? And if so, what makes you think the latter? Well, so I think there definitely is like this this entire idea of like, you know, a, a lot of conservative mainstream conservative ideas are hate speech. Uh, I can speak like at Pinterest for the 2020 election. It was interesting. There were these documents specifically b- about protecting candidates like Kamala Harris uh, and Elizabeth Warren and Beto, uh, protecting them from basically memes and on the mm-hmm. image board. And they didn't have anything like that for Republicans. Right. Uh, so it is interesting. You know, I think it's a Again, where they see that they they think in their mind they messed up in the 2016 election. They messed up by allowing too much free speech, and then it let people get around the media gatekeepers. And so I, I think really there is 
uh, they think they're doing the right thing. They think that they're they're protecting the public from these ideas, but ultimately it does affect the 2020 election. So they're trying to protect them from memes, but how do they protect Elizabeth Warren from herself? <laughs> <laughs> Everything That's she uploads to Instagram, like I say, I, yeah. I always have to watch it, it through hurts. my fingers. Just, I'm just Elizabeth Warren, drinking a beer, <laughs> drinking a beer. And you're just like, oh, I want to shrink up into my own body cavity and die like that group of people in Superman 2 and float off into space. Oh. <laughs> I don't know how they do well, it. I don't know. The point is, that's not really a question for you so much as me. <laughs> yeah. I that's not fair to you as a guest, Eric. I just, I have my own issues I'm working through. <laughs> Speaking of my own issues, I don't know if you've been, been following this, but this is another reason I wanted to have you on. You know, we've experienced, um, we've been demonetized entirely on YouTube, despite Susan Wojcicki and YouTube admitting that the, we haven't violated any policies, right? This was kind of acquiescing to the Vox Ed Pocalypse, uh, Torch and Pitchfork mob. But more recently, and I don't want to bore the, the viewers here because they, they know about this, but I, I know that maybe you haven't been filled in on all of it. We found that we're blacklisted shadow banned from specific search terms. So in other words, if you search Steven Crowder, change my mind, doesn't show up for many results. If you search Steven Crowder on YouTube, doesn't show up for 70 results. And then we found out, and this is why I do think there could be some meddling with the 2020 election, that if we used a VPN and used an address outside of the United States, the UK yep. or Sweden or Spain, that they showed up entirely. It was only blacklisted. My name and our primary videos, our videos with the most plays, blacklisted exclusively in the United States. We don't have any answers on that mm. yet from YouTube. Is that something that surprises you? Do you have any answers maybe? Can you help me? Help me. <laughs> yeah. Um, so like we do know that, you know, there are these there are these blacklists I inside of inside of Google. And so we can kind of see the anecdotal evidence from, uh, you know, from the user side. And like we saw this at Project Veritas, too, where a lot of our videos, you know, just won't show up. You'd see like CNN videos about Project Veritas when you Google when you right. search on YouTube Project Veritas. Right. But, um, you know, I, I think I think the biggest thing people can do to help is is if you're on the inside of YouTube and Google, uh, you know, come to Project Veritas, Veritas Tips at ProtonMail.com. I, I, again, like we see the evidence from the outside. I think now we need to see like the how they're doing this from the inside. And you know, it, since the Pinterest story, we've actually had two Google whistleblowers uh, come out. And and I know like uh, uh, Louder with Crowder was actually on one of the Google Now newsfeed blacklists uh, that one of the insiders exposed to. Ooh, <laughs> yeah. What? Well, I know well, why. Yeah. I, mean, yeah, I knew it. Um, I mean, you know, listen, I'm sorry that you guys are lumped in with this, where we just had Donald Trump <laughs> yeah. playing Peter Gabriel. Like, you clearly are doing the Lord's work, and we just like dressing up like ladies. Um, who, let me ask you this, in your experience, who would typically order these kinds of blacklists? Because, and this is just me, sort of, it's, it's an opinion, it's speculation. But it seems to me that if it's blacklisted exclusively in the United States, someone had to do that. That's not an algorithm. Yeah. Right. So these are, these are typically manual actions. I mean, again, we don't know the how in this case specifically, uh, but from what we've seen historically, they're they're very manual operations. And the thing is, you have about ninety percent of people in tech companies are people like me, or like, or or at least people who just like are live and lit, uh, live and let live. Um, they're not super political. But then you get like ten percent of people who are direct activists, and they go in and they and they advocate for adding people to blacklist for censoring people in certain regions and yeah i mean a lot of uh there is a lot of sophistication in being able to uh delineate by region too in this case and those people who you say you know there's there's 10 percent. i think you said might be activists are they uh in a disproportional amount of positions of power yeah, so we typically see this in like trust and safety teams or some type of content management teams, right? We're not talking about the the software engineers, the people I guess like like I used to be, right. uh, you know, aren't typically involved. We're just trying to make good software. But you kind of have people in these in these uh, like misinformation efforts uh, who tend to be these these complete like activists and who are going to leadership and saying this this stuff is hate speech. We need to take care of this and uh, and then of course they bow to the mob. Right. Uh, I think Court of Black Garrett had a question. Well, uh, Eric, do you think it's possible that it might be a single like bad actor that's in there that just has the ability to add these search results in there? How often are these things yeah, monitored? Yeah, or, or is it more systemic, yeah. I guess, yeah. I, I think that's sometimes the case, but I'd say much more much more often it's systemic. I mean, mm -hmm. like at Pinterest, we were seeing that where it, it's really this entire team. It, you know, and these people, again, like, 
are all in this echo chamber. They're all encouraging each other. And, and you know, they, a lot, pretty much everybody thinks they're doing the right thing. They think that, you know, they're very high IQ people and people in the middle of the country just don't know what to think. And they need to, they need to take care of hate speech and misinformation mm-hmm. as they deem it so. Uh, final question before we go to the web extended. Let me ask you this. You said that maybe 10% of people are activists. And I do think that people, I mean, are, is Jack Dorsey, Mark Zuckerberg, Susan Wojcicki, are they all activists? Or is it just because they tend to be liberal, but they're not activists? Uh, do you think that they're really sort of an, an empathetic ear to these activists and the activists know that they have a, a quick path to make, getting these changes made? And, right. and then are there, have you seen other employees who might be leftist liberal in these companies who knew what was going on and, and, and thought that it was wrong, regardless of personal politics? Yeah. Um, as for like the direct top leadership, I think a lot of them, yeah, they're 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 left wing, but again, they're they're not complete activists. They just bow to the mob. They just bow to their employees who are activists who are telling them we're going to have walkouts if this stuff doesn't stop. Um, and and they're just kind of in a difficult position in that way. Um, and then yeah, I, I think. There definitely are like uh, left-leaning people inside these tech companies. I personally, since my stories come out and since the Google stories at Project Veritas now have come out, uh, people I used to uh, people I used to work with in the Android community are like, I don't agree with you on like uh, the issues that they were censoring, pro-life, conservative issues, but um, but I like I'm totally against this tech censorship. Right. Uh, so they're totally. I mean, this is also a free speech issue, and I think yeah. people are seeing that more and more so. I, I think that's a good point, because a lot of people think the First Amendment only applies, obviously, to government regulation of speech, and, and it does, but there is a culture of censorship that occurs yeah. right now. I think people now call it cancel culture, but I think it goes even further than that. It goes further than just celebrities and, and comedians getting protested when there is a systemic uh, blocking, really, a prevention of people from even uh, having a seat at the table. And here's something, to, I, I said, no, I said it was the last question. I want to go to the web extended, but you said they bow to the mob. This is something that's important to me because a lot of people on the left, and you'll see the Young Turks say this, they say, well, big tech, they just go where the money is. But the truth is the money isn't with the outrage mob. Most people aren't on board with that. So why do you think it is that big tech companies are willing to forego some profit in many instances to appease them? Because that's that's a, a very new shift for businesses. I think it's true. I think that there's some things, I, I mean, certainly to a lot of these like uh, middle manager or upper executives, uh, there are things more important than money to them. You know, they, they can always get a new job. They can, uh, they're already making lots of money, but they really view like their mission as, uh, as um, you know, directors for the culture. Yeah. That uh, makes sense. It's effectively practiced secularism uh, as a religion. All right, listen, we're going to go to Web Extended, but where's the best place for people to send the tips to get involved? Because we've had some people send us stuff, and we don't really know what to do with it. It's a comedy show. <laughs> so where should people send it for you? Yeah, if you're on the inside of a big tech company or any media institution, or you want to go undercover with Project Veritas, projectveritas.com slash brave. Send your tips to Veritas Tips at protonmail.com. We'll protect your anonymity and security. They will have you go undercover, and you don't oh. even have to go in Trudeau blackface. Web extended <laughs> for those who are Mug Club. We'll go to that for the rest of you. Wait for the close. Or don't. Bimbo, bimbo. My name is Mr. Susan. You must choose, and now it is time for you to do the choosing. I am Mr. T. Uh-huh. M- Mr. Trump, why, why have you? I interest you in buying whistle. Oh, okay, I told you. I, 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 whistle I, 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 Dragon I, I, listed. I am only interested in the individual who purchased and proceeded to frankly blow So here at this show, we, we joke around quite a bit because we like to have a laugh. Name that reference for those who don't. I think you should know that one. Uh, but if you use your firearm in self-defense, for most people, that's not funny. And most gun owners don't ever actually think about what happens when they've reached that point until it's too late. What do you say when the police arrive? More importantly, what do you not say? You don't want to be on World Star that day. Can I say that? Well, I don't care. I already made it in. That's where firearms uh, legal protection comes in. They're the leader in prepaid self-defense protection plans for your firearm. They're designed specifically to protect you and your family. And listen, they have the balls to support the show. Just like Walther, 
We are incredibly grateful, and uh, they offer so much help to you and your family, from paying bills to bail bond to helping you get your firearm back, even helping you get your home cleaned up after you use it in your house in self-defense. So for some exclusive pricing, some discounts, uh, you can go to, uh, not lotterworthcredit.com, you go to firearmslegal.com slash LWC. I'm so used to plugging my own stuff because most sponsors won't touch me. Thanks, Firearms Legal. Firearmslegal.com slash LWC. I have it. Everyone here has it. It really is worth doing for a, a nominal fee. Oh, that was shark. called the uh, sexy until he dies. Drowning <laughs> dance, like never even broke character. What is? When did this become sexy? What? When was this the? I don't know. Do we know where that comes from? Is there some historical context? <laughs> You're the historian no, 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 here. No, 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 I yeah. expect you to know. <laughs> what is this? Like, has anyone ever? Has anyone ever seen this? It's like a male Monroe thing. Like, ooh, Does she do that. Ooh, it looks like she is. Uh, she is uh, in heat. <laughs> I don't understand it. I don't, know. I don't get it. I mean, I understand breasts. <laughs> I understand naked people. Like, okay, yeah, that turns me on. Yeah. But, but this? Maybe she looks like a... I also don't understand this. When people are like, this guy is hot, and they do this. Has anyone ever been sexually attracted to, and they actually get, like, temperature Physically hot? Physically warm. Yeah, I, don't I don't know. know. Don't ask me. Maybe it happens. I, maybe that's maybe. the flushing that occurs during, uh, during uh, coitus. I don't know. We should ask Jordan Peters. Yes. We should ask Jordan Peters. That's one of the, the that's what Women wear rouge because it symbolizes the flushing that occurs yeah, during sexual intercourse with all the variables and the facets. Um, <laughs> thank you so much to Eric Cochran. Ex- Web Extended, where we get into some stuff that we cannot talk about yeah. YouTube, uh, on YouTube uh, for those who are Club members. And for those who are not, please do join. We're also going to have a whole episode of jokes we cannot tell on yep. YouTube uh, next week. Pretty so soon. A couple of things I wanted to talk about here, and I, I know that sometimes these are meant to be inspirational, and then uh, I fail miserably because I'm just in an angry place, and that happens. <laughs> but this, this is what I was thinking about today because I, I heard this. I don't know. Some self-help guru was on the radio. I'm lying. Not radio. It was some podcast and it was a yeah, commercial. Listens Who listens radio? to radio anymore? Nobody. I feel like if, if radio were a book today, you'd have to go <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> like in the page master. You know, there's still people there. I don't understand it. I don't get it. But uh, not really. It was a podcast. And you hear that, you know, you hear this a lot. You, we're always told to love ourselves. Love yourself. Right? You're told to, to be kind to yourself. And I've, I've heard that my whole life. I know you've heard that or some, some iteration of that your whole life. And it would always upset me. And I guess in part because I don't know what it means or at least I don't know what it's meant to convey or why it's something that needs to play a role in our discourse. I don't think it's helpful. Let me preface this, of course, you should appreciate your life. And of of course, you should respect your body, your mind, the blessings that have been bestowed upon it, your abilities. And that means taking care of them. And I suppose that means being kind to yourself. I understand that. And yet, yes, okay, your life is a gift. Before I go negative here, and then I'm gonna turn it back around. So just, just let this big tugboat get pulled to shore. It's going to be up, down, and then up again. So, yes, your life is a gift. Okay, You should love it. You should love yourself. And that's why I've talked repeatedly about finding what it is at which you're excellent, what your purpose is, and, and creating a plan to maximize your fullest capabilities. And as always, that just... It, it, it comes with making a plan and repetitions, repetitions, repetitions. I've talked about that. It's getting the reps in, getting the reps in. No one gets great at anything without getting the reps in, getting the reps in. Even someone who has a natural talent, it's about a plan, discipline, repetitions. Go back to previous episodes. If you, can, you can't search them on YouTube, but you know, try and find them somewhere. You can find them on Mug Club on The Blaze, and you'll see what I'm talking about. That is something I've repeated ad nauseum. Maybe I'll put it in a book someday. I don't know. You let me know if you want a book. Probably not. I just don't want to write a book because I don't use them. I don't want you to have to, in three years, go, do it. <sighs> Now, this was a bestseller back in the day, and, and then I'm dead from, you know, overdosing on opiates because I got into Gerald's stash when he was tapering off. I, I've never touched him. Yes, I have. So, 
That's going to be a, that's gonna, yeah, that went on a real weird tangent. <laughs> <laughs> like, repl- let's replace the cocaine rumor with hardcore heroin. Um, but I want to I do I want to talk about something a little less comfortable, but equally important today. Okay, loving yourself doesn't mean that you love everything about yourself. Only a fool would feel that way, or maybe someone who's watched too many romantic comedies. And we see this a lot. Why can't he just love me exactly the way I am? Well, let me explain. It might be tough to, but because a good part of you, there's a significant portion of you that sucks. Listen, there there are parts of yourself, okay, that you should hate. Everyone out there. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. There are parts of you you should hate. And I want to explore it a little bit. Let me use myself as an example first. Let me plunge into this ice cold pool so that you don't feel so uncomfortable. I don't hate myself. But there are things about myself that I absolutely hate. There are aspects of my personality that I recognize, that I've worked on my whole life, and I despise. I- I've talked about this before, being a game day player, right? And that's, that's a good thing. It's an important quality to learn. But it's not a good quality uh, to rely upon. And about this, relating to myself, I hate that for some reason, I don't know why I've always been this way, there's a gear that I can only kick into when things go badly. Uh, when the Vox Adpocalypse happened, that's an example. Recently, there have been some, some pretty stressful situations that have come up with yeah. YouTube. Uh, more than that, but really, that's, that's been a big one. We're going back and forth with lawyers. It's been tough. But I perform at my best with my back against the wall I always have. I think it's why I've probably procrastinated my whole life. I was a guy who would cram for exams. It's why I would almost always wait until I found myself in a position of conflict before really sort of biting down on the mouthpiece and getting to business. And maybe it just goes to the ADHD personality. I, I don't know. But it's not a good thing. I hate it about myself. I hate that most of the time I feel tired, I feel exhausted, I have trouble focusing. And then for some reason, when something goes wrong, some high pressure situation arises, I can for some reason, kick into a gear where it almost feels as though I'm not me. It, it sometimes feels like I'm not even the one speaking or acting, but information is, is, is traveling through me, and I can't control it. It only happens in positions of stress, which are not good for me. My verbal fluidity is enhanced. My short-term memory locks onto where I need it to be. I'm focused. I'm clear. Pain doesn't register the same way. I've literally torn ligaments, separated joints, without even realizing it until I'd driven home and the adrenaline died down. But here's the thing, being in that pressure cooker is rare. At least it should be. And there are only so many times that you can redline that engine. And sometimes it's, it's very hard to fix and I haven't been able to fix it. You know, I would, if, I would love to hear from some people out there who are maybe relating to this, who struggle with this. If you have any solutions, a part of me talking about this is, is probably looking for advice just as much as, as offering any. So please do comment. Uh, the point is this, we're all told that you should love yourself. Listen, you should, okay? But just like love the sinner, hate the sin, it's okay. I'm giving you permission here. It's okay for there to be things that you don't like about yourself. You know why? Here's why. Because you're not perfect the way you are. That's a very new concept, by the way, that you're, you're perfect just the way you are. Why, because Pink wrote a song? Up, up until very recently, near, nearly all societies, and, and, and certainly all societies that I can think of since modern Christendom, started with the baseline knowledge, the acceptance, of the fact that you are imperfect. We're all imperfect, but you specifically are imperfect, very much so. And that the pursuit of perfection is a facet of the human condition. But somewhere along the way, more recently, as it relates to human history, maybe because it sells albums or books, I don't know, we decided that it was more important to convince people to love themselves rather than to improve themselves. And here's my challenge to you today. Don't think of all the things you love about yourself. We've done that in the past, and there's a time for that. I want you to think of the things that you hate about yourself. What is it that bothers you? What is it that when you look back on your life, you're going to say, or at least maybe you think you'll say, oh, man, you know, I wish I didn't do it that way. Or, ah, I I really wish I'd have taken the time to to fix that about myself. I want you to take a minute right now and, and genuinely think about it. Think about what that is then try to chart a course to a solution. And uh, with this one I'm facing, I don't know. For mine, it's tough. I would advise you to start searching, I guess, for for information on on people who struggle with the problems that are similar. You know, just like I've talked about this in the past, if you want to get really good at something, 
start with trying to emulate the best in the world. It's something I don't understand. Often you'll see people enter athletics or you'll see, you'll see people enter into any ad- endeavor. Say, so, well, I'm just gonna kind of work and see what happens. Well, hold on a second. If you don't want to be the best at this, you have no business being in that arena. If you're going to emulate someone, emulate the best at it. That's how, that should be your starting off point. Do the same thing here with your struggles, with your hangups. Find someone who's had to overcome the same hurdles. Someone who's, who, who's driven through the roadblocks. Someone who's done it. Seek out an expert. Maybe it's a medical professional. I don't know, maybe it's a psychiatrist. I have no idea. In, in my case, you know, listen, it's difficult. I can't really search people who hit fifth gear when they are under pressure and feel chronically exhausted the rest of the time. It's, the closest I can find is adrenaline junkie. Some people have said that that's what I am, but I, I, but I don't like heights. So I think it's bullshit. <laughs> but I don't know, but it's something that I don't like about myself and something that I've always had to work on. And I think if you've listened to the show, you've heard me talk about that before trying to find that third gear. I think for a long time, there were maybe three years doing this job where I was working from five in the morning to seven at night every day, every day. And then I'd work like a basic eight hours on Saturday and a few hours on Sunday. And, and I was like a madman. I was a crazy person. And, and I was only able to do it because I had to. Back then, I didn't have the resources, the help I needed. We didn't have the infrastructure. Go, go look at episodes of this show, okay? Like I said, I'm going to bring this tugboat to shore. But go look at episodes of this show if the search engine worked on YouTube. Again, I feel <laughs> yeah. like I have to repeat this. Say 2015 or 2016, okay? Every single sketch was me. I had to write them all. I had to play every different character. I had to research every meat segment. And since then, sometimes, I will say this, I I feel like a shell of my former self in that I have people around me now who are capable of shouldering the burden. And you know what? And they want to shoulder the burden. And I struggle with guilt. I hate that about myself. I struggle with guilt. Sometimes I think like, oh man, I I should be doing that. I shouldn't be putting Quarter Black Garrett in in a sketch, all those sketches. I should be doing those because that's what I used to do. I'm giving him too much. I'm giving him too much work, and I don't think you're great at it. I love it. It's fun. You're fantastic at it, but because for so long I had to do it, I didn't have the option of someone like you. I've struggled with this guilt. I've struggled with trying to put myself back into this pressure cooker because for some reason it's a. I wake up and I'm able to make things happen, but I don't want to be there. It's not a good place to be. This isn't humble bragging. It's the kind of thing that shaves years off your life. And I, there's no other way for me to turn it on. I don't like it about myself. But here's why I'm talking about this. I think this might help someone out there. Someone listening, what is it that you hate about yourself? Maybe you're relating to this. It's something that's out of your control and you don't necessarily know how to go about fixing it. It starts with information. It starts with the truth. Do other people struggle with this? Have other people found solutions? My goal here when I do these these Crowder Closes segments, as they've been branded by the team here, I want... um, we have, we have millions of listeners and viewers, okay, Mil- millions. And I wake up not feeling exalted by that fact, humbled by it. I do not take it granted for a second. I want you guys to clearly understand that. Believe me, I don't. But I want the millions of people who will be watching or listening to this to go out and be better human beings. I want you all, yeah, my primary job is to make you laugh. I understand that, that's my lane. But if I can, I want you all to be better fathers. I want you all to be better mothers, better husbands, better wives. I want you to be better sons, daughters, disciples. I'm not a disciple of me. I, I'm a Christian. Being a disciple of Christ, that's for me. Those are the ABCs of me. That's the end game. But if I haven't served to improve the lives of everyone who watches or listens to this show, and by proxy, improve the lives of everyone you touch, you know, I will have failed. And I think an important component to affecting positive change is identifying what it is that you just can't stand about yourself. It's just as important as recognizing your strengths. Again, what is it in your quiet moments? I don't know if you have this. I get this when you can't sleep, your head hits the pillow and you actually wince. Do you ever do that? You go, oh, I can't believe I did that. Oh, I can't, I can't believe I said that. That came out of my mouth. I want you to sit with some quiet time right now, pause it if you have to. Put on your meditative music. I don't know what it is. Maybe you have an app. Most people have apps. Get into your, get into your happy place and then make it very unhappy. Make it very unpleasant. What do you despise about yourself? Can it be fixed? Spoiler alert, yeah, it can. How can it be fixed? That's what you need to figure out. Start by finding other people who've struggled with it, who fixed it about themselves, ask for help, then create a plan and fix it. 
starts with recognizing there are things about yourself that suck that you should hate and need to change. Told you it would be an upper. See you next week.